Hi my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do second, oh, I almost said semester, really? Always. This is how much I know about being pregnant. Today we're going to do second trimester symptoms. I am only halfway through my second semester, but I have a full page and a half of notes small writing. So I have a lot of notes. I figured I'd break it up. So this video wasn't way too long and overwhelming. I would do the first half of the second trimester and then the second half of the second trimester, which kind of makes sense because the trimesters are long and six weeks can include a lot in pregnancy. So if you're interested in my early second trimester symptoms, please keep watching. hair that you just don't know where it belongs. It doesn't know where it belongs. We're here with this curl. My, my curly girls can probably understand that with me. It just, it doesn't know where it wants to go. Does it belong here? That looks weird. Does it belong here? That looks weird. So you know what? It wants to be here. We'll leave her right there. Okay, back with my handy dandy sparkly pink notebook that now I feel guilty and I feel like I need to go find myself a sparkly blue notebook because before we knew the gender of baby boy Clausen, we were talking about how this might be a subliminal message because I write all of my notes for my pregnancy videos in here. But that's okay. Adam has that gorgeous pink shirt and my little boy will wear pink and it'll be fine. We're going to review weeks 13, 14 to 18. I'm like 18 and a half right now. Today's Monday when I'm filming this. See, it's got a mind of its own, I told you. Today is Monday when I'm filming this and on Thursday I'll be 19 weeks. I am so excited to get to 20 weeks just because it marks the halfway point and Adam said halfway is downhill with everything, right? It's Once you make it halfway, it's like downhill from there. I'm like, <laughs> your version of downhill and my version of downhill are gonna be very different, but I get what he's saying. And I have to say, I felt like first trimester dragged. I felt like these past six weeks have been flying, thank God. So around week 13, I completely lost my appetite. I almost felt like I was force feeding myself because by the end of the day, I would know that I had to eat and I would be afraid that I was going to wake up in the middle of the night hungry and God forbid, like I don't want to starve the baby. So I would eat but I didn't want to eat. I just knew I had to eat. I've had zero cravings this whole entire time. There have been times, very, very few times that I'm like, ooh, that sounds really good, but ugh, it sounds gross at the same time. No aversions whatsoever, thankfully. And then my appetite is weird. It'll come back with a vengeance one day, maybe once or twice a week. And then other days I could care less about food. This past week, probably, 17 and a half to 18 and a half, really nothing. I could care less. I wake up and I eat, always eat one first thing in the morning. So I don't necessarily wake up hungry, but I'm also not hungry, if that makes sense. Around noon I'll eat and then around four o'clock for the past week, I'll start getting really strange cramps in my stomach. And it's sort of kind of like period cramps, not contractions, I don't think, I mean, I'm only 19 weeks, but there were periodish cramps, not hunger pains. And that's been my cue that I need to eat because baby boy's getting hungry, but I don't feel hungry. It's bizarre. I'm on so many of those pregnancy apps, which are a lifesaver because there are so many things that it's my first. So I'm questioning and somebody has asked a question in one of those apps and I go and I read it and I'm like, that's totally normal. Okay, we're good. And a lot of people are saying right around this time frame, they don't have much of an appetite, but then I heard like 23-ish weeks, it comes back with a vengeance. And some people say like they just don't ever feel full. So we'll see, but right now I'm just on the not really so hungry bandwagon, I guess. I also noticed that this phase of second trimester, I'm extremely emotional, but it's really only about good stuff, like touching stuff that makes you cry will make me cry in a heartbeat. My mood has been incredible. I've been in a really good mood. I've not been cranky. I've not been hangry. I've not been moody. I've had fun. I'm like laughing at everything. Adam's had a couple times where he's like, we're joking, like, are you pregnant? Because he's like, I just feel moody. I feel overly emotional. He's kind of short tempered a little bit here and there. I think he's just stressed about stuff. Sometimes when I'm not in this phase, that'll kind of rile me up and I'll be like, come on. I'm like, well, if you're mad, I'm gonna be mad back at you, which is silly. 
I don't do it on purpose, but like PMS, you guys know. Even with my hormones right now, I guess I'm just in like everybody says that honeymoon of the second trimester, I'll go above and beyond to try to help his mood, which is I'm loving and I'm hoping that this lasts and I can ride this as long as I possibly can. But the tears come in a moment or I'm a tough girl. I don't like to let people see me cry. Not that you'd ever know because I've cried on many videos. You know, it's fake when it's the internet and you're putting yourself out there. If you guys watched my first trimester video and I'll post it up there if you're interested, if you haven't watched it yet, or I'll post it up there if you're interested, if you haven't watched it yet. But I had mentioned in there that I did not like to be touched. I actually felt disgusting by being touched. I kind of had an increased libido, but then like you couldn't touch my neck or my chest or my back because it just grossed me out. It made me want to vomit actually. That completely, thank God, disappeared probably between weeks 14 and 15 and it's, oh, it's still gone. My libido, shot through the roof. I've seen this on other people's videos. I've heard this before that some women, I think it's kind of common, get really, really increased libido during second trimester. We'll leave it at that. In the beginning of, well, mostly first trimester, I would get really snippy with Adam. He's the closest person to me. We were together all the time. So I would take out my emotions on him. So there were times where I was like plotting my escape and planning my trip back to New Jersey because I felt like in my head I couldn't stand him. That was all hormones. That wasn't him at all. Obviously, I'm deeply in love with him. Around the same time frame, 14 weeks, and it's still, like I am just so overly in love with him. Like I joke with him, baby daddy is just like the apple of my eye. I wanna be with him all the time. I wanna cuddle with him all the time. I can't get enough of him. That's definitely been a very welcome change in the second trimester because that's more me than first trimester. And that was really foreign, not wanting to be touched and not wanting to touch him because I'm affectionate and I'm madly in love with him. And we're still kind of in the honeymoon phase of our relationship. Around 15 weeks, I started to feel ridiculously insecure in my body. I started to get a lot more bloated and look thick. I did not have a belly that popped yet. Actually, for me, being an estrogenic female, we gotta get comfortable for this one. <laughs> Back when I was competing in fitness, I had a trainer who explained to me there are different ethnicities that hold weight differently, just purely on genetics. So, Italian blooded people will hold their weight in our hips, in our thighs, in our rear ends, lower body. For me, my calves, even my ankles, that's where I hold fat. I'm very thin in my midsection my, and I have a very small waist. I'm built basically like a fertility goddess. Whereas somebody of Hispanic descent will carry their weight more in their midsection and they'll be lean and narrow in their lower body. I remember those were the two ethnicities that he explained to me, so I'm not trying to leave anybody out. I was competing with a Mexican girl on my team and there was a girl who was half Italian and half Puerto Rican that we competed with. With. So he was explaining this all to us about our figures and how we needed to diet differently for our show. I am saying that to say when I first got pregnant in my first trimester and then the beginning of second trimester up until about 15 weeks, I just gained in my lower body. I got really cellulite in my the front of my thighs. My hips actually, not that they spread so much, but they just kind of like grew. I don't know how else to explain it. So I already have stretch marks on my hips from when I gained weight during puberty. Those stretch marks kind of moved up a little bit. So things are just moving around, if that makes sense. During that time, I felt better so I wasn't sick all of the time. I didn't feel pregnant. I didn't necessarily look pregnant and I got in my head and I made a couple of videos about how I felt, how I felt I looked, and you guys are just along for the ride with me. That was that point in my journey. Around 17 to 18 weeks, that started to pass because I really started to get more of a visible bump albeit a smaller bump, I look pregnant now. I don't look like I gave up on life and I've been existing on beer and bagels. So I started to feel comfortable dressing up again. I wanted to wear a lot of dresses and skirts, whereas first trimester, I just felt so awful that I lived in leggings and workout clothes majority of the time. I just wanted to lay around the house. I didn't want to be around people. Even when we went out, I remember one time Adam's like, do you want to go out to dinner? I'm like, if I can wear leggings, 
<laughs> I was just not feeling it. So I'm enjoying this phase because I'm sure next part of this trimester and third trimester, I'm probably going to feel like a whale, probably not going to want to go out so much or move so much, but right now I'm enjoying it. Around 14 and a half weeks, I felt like I started to feel the baby move. I remember one time specifically, I was in the car, I was by myself and a good club song from the early 2000s came on the radio. Oh my God, what was it? I don't remember. But I started singing, rolled down the windows, was having a full blown car concert when all of a sudden I felt on my stomach, tap, 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 tap. I'm telling you, he was like, mom, no, please save us. Don't do this to me. You're making my unborn ears hurt. And I just thought it was the cutest thing ever. I started laughing, I was in the best mood. And that was the first time I really felt like I felt the baby. And I texted my sister as soon as I got home and I asked her, is this too soon? And she said, mm, it is a little bit on the early side, but you might have yourself a kicker in there. If he takes anything after his father, he's gonna have really long legs, really strong legs, so maybe. That's how I've felt the baby moving. I've been questioning it up until my last doctor's appointment at 17 weeks, but it just kind of either feels like gas bubbles with no gas attached. Sorry if that's TMI, but just kind of feels like when there's rumbling in your stomach and then usually when there's rumbling in your stomach and you're not pregnant, there's an end result there. It just feels like that feeling and nothing's there. Or it just kind of feels like a tapping on the inside of my stomach. But I kept saying, it's probably just gas. Everybody's telling me it's way too early. And then when I went to the doctor, both the nurse practitioner and the doctor asked me at separate times, have you felt him yet? And I was like, I don't know, this is what I feel. And they were like, absolutely 100%, that's him. Don't doubt it, that is him, enjoy it. So I love it. I notice my baby moves the most when I am in the car. Also, between nine o'clock and 9.30 every night for the past week or so, I call it gymnastics hour because he's in there moving around. I don't know if it's the time frame of when I eat and like the way my food's digesting and he's getting the food and so he's got a lot more energy or if it's, I've heard this too, when you move throughout the day, the motion of your body with the baby inside the amniotic fluid, amniotic fluid, is that what it's called? Amniotic. I think so, whatever. With the baby inside of, you know, the fluid, then that rocks them to sleep. But when you're sitting down at night and you're still, then they're awake and that's when you feel them moving the most. So that could be it, I'm not sure. I'm not feeling him at night. I don't necessarily feel him every single day. Maybe the past two or three days I've felt him basically every day, but that's not a problem for you guys that are watching this because you're in the beginning of your second trimester, you're pregnant, you're trying to get pregnant that's okay. He's still so small. He's only about a little bit bigger than the size of my hand right now. And he's less than a pound. So he's so small in there. It's mostly my bump is made out of uterus right now, not baby. If you don't feel him moving, that's totally fine. A lot of people don't report feeling babies moving until like the mid 20 week range. If you're smaller when you get pregnant, they say you'll feel baby sooner. Supposedly in theory, I'm gonna feel baby a little bit sooner. Also, if it's your second or second or subsequent, sounds like legal work, but if it's after your first baby, you know what to feel. So a lot of people feel their babies like around 12 weeks. It just feels like taps, sometimes like flicks, but not really even that strong yet, just like little taps. I kind of touched on this already. Around 15 weeks, I noticed my legs got really swollen. The cellulite in my, especially the front of my legs, is a little bit more pronounced. I've always had cellulite. It's just part of my genetics. I've accepted it. It doesn't bother me as much as it used to bother me. When I was younger, I would never wear shorts because of it. But now I think like 90 something percent of women have it. It's fine. When I used to get my period would bloat in my legs, my cellulite would be more apparent. It's just part of retaining water than in my belly. So that's hormones for me. I'm wearing it proudly. It does not deter me from wearing short dresses. It doesn't deter me from wearing leggings. It's not the most awful thing I've ever seen. It's annoying, but it is what it is. It's part of me and my genetics. On a similar token, when I competed in fitness, I would lose a lot of weight. And then after I came off stage, I would gain weight rapidly. This balloon. These balloons are about to die from the gender reveal. I'm holding on to them with dear life, but we gotta put that out of the string was in my face. After one of my competitions, when I was really lean and I gained weight really fast afterwards, I think I would eat like a package of Oreos a day. It was insane. But I developed spider veins right here, 
right above my knee on this thigh. I have probably about that big, yeah, probably about that big of spider veins right there. They're not awful. They've bothered me here and there, but it's not the worst thing. I've noticed that they're more pronounced right now, and I don't know if it's just because I am paying more attention to them. I don't know if it's just because I'm bloated and they look bigger because my skin is stretched out, or if I'm getting more because that's an area that's obviously sensitive to them, and also varicose and spider veins are common in pregnancy. I don't know if it's because you have more blood in your body, if it's because you're heavier, you have more fluid in your body. My hypothesis is it's all of the above. Thank God I haven't gotten varicose veins yet. I hope that stays. I will keep the spider veins. We'll worry about those another time. Honestly, they're not even worrisome to me, but I hope I don't get the varicose vein route just because I don't have to worry about the complications that come along with them later in life. Another thing in my first trimester video, I was saying that I had acne. There's that hair again. I just love that it's part of this video. It keeps making cameos. Okay, we gotta get through this faster. I'm babbling a lot today. So my skin cleared up completely second trimester. I don't know if it's because I stopped eating the crappier foods that I was eating first trimester. Remember, I was eating a Starbucks wrap every single day, among other things that I really never ate. Lost my cravings, really haven't had much of an appetite. My diet's been, for the most part, really clean. My carbs are up, but they're clean. I'm assuming it's kind of a combination of both. My eating's better. I can drink water again. I wasn't able to really drink water. It made me so sick first trimester, and I can only take little sips here and there. But I finally feel like I'm experiencing that pregnancy glow, and my skin's been super clear. Also, Adam's skin has been gorgeous. I'm like, you're getting all of my pregnancy symptoms. What's up, bro? Give me back the good ones. Take the bad ones. Or you're gonna have to push this watermelon out of your... Forget it. The absolute worst symptom and most severe symptom that I've experienced in this part of the second trimester is god awful heartburn. I started getting this dryness. Well, I thought it was dryness right here in my chest and my esophagus. I moved from New Jersey five months ago to Las Vegas, so I thought maybe it had to do with the dryness in the air and living in the desert and just getting used to a new climate. We have a humidifier. We run it every single night. It wasn't getting any better. I felt like every time I took a deep breath, I couldn't get a deep breath because of that dryness and that burning. And a couple days later after that started, I developed a really severe asthmatic cough. Now at my 12 week appointment, I told the doctor that I was having a hard time breathing and she suggested that it was probably my asthma that I had outgrown being re-triggered by pregnancy that's really common. I just figured my asthmatic episodes were different in the desert than they were in the humidity of New Jersey and Long Island where I lived around beaches and the shore my whole entire life up until now. I would get these awful asthmatic coughing fits. One night it was so bad. I don't think Adam or I slept barely a wink that night because he was worried about me. I was every five minutes like, should I go to the ER? I wanna make sure baby's getting enough oxygen. I don't have an inhaler, this and that. The next day was my 17 week appointment. And as I was telling the doctor, I was like, you know, my asthma attacks are really different here. I don't get that wheezing, that sitting on my chest feeling, that tightness. It's just dry, it starts to hurt. And then I get the cough and she was like, that sounds more like heartburn to me. And I was like, yeah, but do you get that coughing fit when you have heartburn? And she said, yeah, you can. I'm just now starting to get the heartburn under control. I still get it. It's still bad. I know it's going to be here till baby comes. I've made a lot of sacrifices and I've avoided a lot of foods that I love and drinks that I love and I was eating up until now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a whole separate video related to pregnancy heartburn and symptoms, why it happens, what to avoid and how to remedy it. And a lot of the remedies that have worked for me have come directly from you guys. So shout out to each and every one of you who have saved, honestly saved me because I was at the point where it was so bad that it was coming up into my throat and I was afraid I was gonna get an ulcer in my esophagus and my throat. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And look out for that video coming soon. I promise for you mommies to be that are struggling with this, I've got a lot of natural remedies for you. I did take medication for a couple days, but I felt so guilty. It's just in my head. Let me side note and caveat. I personally like to be as natural as I possibly can. I personally think in my own humble opinion, this is my opinion. I respect everybody's beliefs, opinions, what you decide to do, what you personally need. I believe that doctors, the United States especially, are so quick to prescribe a drug without actually uncovering the exact issue 
or the cause for the issue. And what they do is they don't even want to look at you. And this is prior to COVID. They're just like, oh, it's this. And they take a guess and they put a Band-Aid on with a prescription. And then you have a side effect from that prescription. So they Band-Aid that issue with another prescription. So I'm saying that to say that some people said that they felt shamed by the way that I talk about medication and being against it is not the right word. I've, if I've said that in the past, I apologize. I am cautious about it and I'm skeptical to take a lot of things because I believe that they can cause more problems. However, if it's necessary and it improves the quality of your life, extends your life, go for it all day long. I hope that clarifies and I'm so grateful I had the opportunity for that to come up to address that in a video. I also noticed my energy is decent. I don't wanna say good. I'm so not like I was before. I used to be one of those people that could just go, 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 not stop run from one place to another, clean the house, throw laundry in, go to the gym, cook dinner, go to the grocery store, you name it, I was doing it without a complaint or a rest, I didn't need to. Now, it is so hard to find the energy sometimes to put on my shoes. I've found that if I go hard one day, then the next day I either need to go really light or I need a day off to recover. And I've had to mentally become okay with that. Yes, my energy sucks. And yes, I wanna lay on the couch for so many more hours than I'm ever used to in the past, but that's okay. Don't beat yourself up. It's just part of it. Your body is constantly working. We are building bones, my friends. We are building organs and your body's gonna need rest. Listen to it. That's really been overarching throughout this whole experience of this trimester. The beginning of the second trimester is just respect this phase and listen to your body. I noticed my bump popped. I think I said this already, but like around 16 weeks. It's a tiny bump, but I, it's a bump. Like he is there. Let's show you guys. It's so weird how your clothes just fit you so differently now, but here he is. And my bump, it still shrinks and it grows. So in the morning, it's a lot smaller, but I ate an enormous salad. Like I'm talking a bag of salad and I ate the whole entire thing for lunch. So there's a lot of bloating going on in there too, but baby boy C, we got a belly. It actually looks bigger in my clothes than it does not in my clothes, but there is no denying there's a baby in there now. Isn't that weird? It looks way bigger in my shirt. The other thing with my bump is I can't suck it in anymore or it hurts. I read that someplace when you can't suck your bump in anymore, that's the difference between a blump, as they call it in the first trimester, which is just a bloated bump in your stomach. It's not the baby, it's just a lot of bloat. And like an actual baby bump is when it's hard and you can't suck it in anymore. On that note, I noticed that my gait, the way that I walk, the past week especially since it's like really popping there is different. I'm walking like a pregnant person. Now I'm not necessarily waddling yet. On my last like three or four mile walk, I felt myself just walking differently. Like everything's pulling forward now. Not a waddle, just a weird gait shift. I feel like everything's like, bleh, like the front of me is like, bleh, everything's falling forward. How, I don't know other words to describe it besides bleh. So when I'm able to slightly tighten my core, you can't suck in your, your gut because it's not a gut, it's a baby bump at this point. It hurts to suck it in. There's like no way to do it. If you just kind of tighten those muscles a little bit and feel them flex, it makes it easier, at least for me right now, it makes it easier to walk and I feel like I'm more in control and my center of gravity is a little bit more like I'm used to versus just kind of like everything just like loose and hanging and waddly, if that makes sense. Okay, the last thing, because this video is ridiculously long. Two more things, actually. When I went to my 17 week appointment, my doctor told me, she's like, you're going to start getting more round ligament pain right now which I was experiencing a little bit first trimester, but that's just when right in here, like right down at the bottom of your bump, you have a ligament called your round ligament that is being stretched right now as everything grows and your organs are moving and making room for baby and baby gets a little bit heavier. I started feeling that ligament pain constantly. Usually it happens if you move too quickly, if you get up, if you kind of just make sudden movements, you might feel some sharp stabbing pains there. She 
She said it's not a problem unless it doesn't go away or you're bleeding. Neither of those have been happening for me. It's just I notice if I sit in certain positions, like if I lean forward, then I will feel it. If I get up off the couch too fast, I'll feel it. And I really feel it when I'm bending over at my waist. So if I bend over at my waist to pick something up, or here's a better example. Normally when I blow dry my hair, I'll flip it all over and I'll, I'll stand up and I'll bend over and I'll blow dry it that way. Well, I can't stand like that anymore. I either have to stand up and do it this way or I have to sit on the bed with my head like this and do it because bending over at the waist is just way too crampy for him. And in fact, one day I was sitting like that. I was ignoring the pain for a second. I was just trying to get through something. I don't remember. And I literally felt him like, hello, you're smushing my house now. The last thing that has been just starting for me and it's not that big of a deal yet, thank God. But there's this thing called pregnancy gingivitis. I started noticing a little bit of bleeding gums when I floss. When I use the water flosser especially, I like it <laughs> because I'm crazy with oral hygiene. I like it high and I like it to pulsate on my gums pretty strong. I'll notice like when I'm finished and I spit out all of that water, there's a little bit of blood tinged in there. I don't bleed aside from that. That's the only time I notice it. I don't have any pain. I don't have any sensitivity. I don't know if that's gonna get worse, but I never bled prior to that. So I guess my gums are just starting to get a little bit sensitive. I also really cut down, almost stopped acidic foods because of the heartburn. So maybe that'll help with gum sensitivity too. And I maybe will avoid it, but I'll keep you guys posted as this trimester progresses to let you know if the gum bleeding or pregnancy gingivitis becomes an issue or more of an issue. So sorry this is so long, but I try to be as thorough as I possibly can so I could share my journey with you. I could teach you if you're new to this. And I am grateful now that I did this and we are 33 minutes in, I'm gonna try to cut it down, that I broke my trimester up into two separate videos because what was this gonna be, three hours if I made it all one long second trimester symptoms video? Sheesh. You guys let me know what else you wanna hear, what else you want me to talk about, other videos you want in the comments below. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one.